Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, episode 157, uh, and I should say we're Atlantic Bushcraft Adventures. Almost forgot about it, but yeah, episode 157, we are going to chat a little bit about luxury items. And my thoughts, Ben, and we, we really didn't have a lot of time to talk about this, like much of our episodes. We kind of like to see what each other has to say, and sometimes uh, it adds a bit of mystery. Other times, you know what? It's all kind of BS. Sometimes we just don't have the time to talk to each other. Or we just failed. <laughs> but anyway, it's still fun. Um, so what is a luxury item? What do we consider some luxury items? Maybe you guys uh, that are joining us will give us some of the ideas of the luxury items you have. And when we say luxury items, at least to me, it doesn't have to be expensive. It's just something that makes the stay in the woods so much nicer. Like, it's it's that oddity. You always see somebody when you're out camping with them, you're like, oh my god, I wish I had that. And that's kind of what some of these things are. Yeah, I mean, and I've seen some pretty cool ones over the years. Not all ones that, like, we necessarily have. But you're in the woods and you see someone with this item, you're like, I would never have thought to take that. It's like, no way is it a necessity. But holy cow, did that ever make the trip, like... I, uh, I did a, a canoe trip one time down a river, and we just happened to, to pull into a campsite. We were sharing it with four or five other people. And this one person pulls out a reflector oven, sets it up next to the campfire, and starts baking muffins. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> like, that's a game changer to a degree. If you have the ability to take it with you, that's an item. Yeah. And it, it didn't weigh that much. It wasn't that big. It's just something you, you wouldn't think to take. Or I wouldn't have thought to take up till that point. Now, I think about it. <laughs> I was going to say, in our outing, you brought an oven, and it was amazing, is all I can say. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it exists. Uh, but it, it, it was never something I thought about as a canoe trip thing. I always thought of that as something more like a car camping thing. Yeah, glamping. Yeah. yeah. But all of a sudden, like, no, no, like, this is a thing, right? And that's a luxury item. That's an item that you don't need. It's not necessity, but then when you're in there, you're kind of like, man, this guy got to figure it out. Like this is this is making, you're not roughing it. You you are thriving in the wilderness, and I think that's the goal of bush. You know, like it's not just to survive. You know, anyone anyone can go out and survive, but it's to go out and thrive. Like not only are you doing good, but you're actually excelling. You're doing art, and you're doing crafts and you're doing things that are just awesome and you're cooking like fancy meals that tells me that you've got it figured out somebody can go in the woods and figure it out 20 miles back and you're like there are people at home who aren't eating this good and i mean it's been a while since we mentioned it but to bring it back into play deep fried turkey in the woods that was a luxury 100 percent luxury but man <laughs> Has a deep fried turkey ever tasted so good as one that you've deep fried in the middle of nowhere? You you so want to do that again, don't you? Oh, bud, I you have no idea. I actually went and got it. Yeah, it's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and funny enough, one of the first things I had on my list, quote unquote, was good food, and that was uh, lesson learned for me. Much like you said, went out with somebody, Ben, and seeing that you were eating like a king comparatively to like the gruel I was eating, and I say gruel nicely because i had brought what are we plain oatmeal plain rice a can of tuna and a bag of spices and i'm like oh yeah i got food for like five days and then the first morning ben's <laughs> over there with bacon eggs cheese and i'm like eating my goopy oatmeal going what what the hell did i do wrong here like this this isn't right <laughs> and yeah so the first thing for me is just definitely good food some people will claim it's not a luxury but it's the type of food you're taking take something you enjoy take something that's gonna bring you pleasure as you eat it because it makes the trip so much nicer it, it does it adds to it like like i said if, if you're just surviving if you're just going out i mean i i understand ultralight people like i do i i really get it, get it but a lot of times they've given up on stuff that to me brings me too much pleasure and you know i am a person who enjoys pleasure like i'm, I'm you know there was a time where I was quite a big boy, and it's because I enjoy things that taste good, that that feel fill me. I enjoy the the, the finer things, and I'm life. living that life, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> right? it, 
I think it's it's worth doing sometimes, and and just eating good in the woods, it makes the difference. Like you know, I look forward to going back because I know I'm going to have steak, I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that, and I'm going to cook it in a place that most people would even try to do that same thing, and it's going to be awesome. Uh, those little luxury items are great. The thing is, you just don't want to overload yourself with luxury items. You don't go in the woods with everything, including the kitchen sink. But maybe a sink is the luxury item. Maybe for you, a little folding canvas or style to sink. And I've seen them online. I've seen people use them. They're great. Maybe that's the luxury item. Like being able to cook and clean your dishes in, a, in an actual sink might be the thing that brings you the most joy. Because we've all done it where you've gone out on like five or six rocks at the beach so you can get seven or eight inches of water. And you're, you're crouched over there trying to support yourself while clean, cleaning your dish. And if you're lucky, you don't fall in. Now, I, I mean, I never fall in. This is well, me. I didn't make it the first day we were out, Ben, before falling in. <laughs> first no, hour. It, yeah. What? And, and that's the thing, right? Like, what is the thing that's going to bring you that pleasure? And if it happens to be a nice folding sink, or fancy food or like a special oven you know no harm in it and if you want to make it all polite there's ways to figure out how to make those things light and not an overburden sometimes you can find make them like a multi-purpose thing like your your sink which is also already all light helps hold other gear together so it fits in your pack cleaner right good packing can make those things easier um but it, it makes the difference uh so what else do we want to bring up? I mean, that was one that I didn't even think of until I talked about it. No, no, and good points. Just before we get too far in, uh, Steve joins us here in the comments, as uh, he has for quite some time now. And he had a couple of good things that came up on the side. Uh, so good quality toilet paper. I mean, you know what? That is a luxury item. There's, I've been in the woods with people that will literally be like, oh, I'll use leaves. And then you get out there and you find out all the leaves have fallen and all you're left with is pine needles and pine cones. Toilet paper is a luxury item. You know what I mean? But it's true. Take the time, get a good quality toilet paper. Just don't buy something cheap because you're going camping or outing or whatever. Grab some yeah. toilet paper, throw it in a sandwich bag, make sure it stays dry. It's going to be nice if you need to use it in the middle of the night, to the middle of the day, whatever. It, it's just one less thing to worry about. And that and, right there can take a ton of stress off. And it really does. Like, I lived for a while in a government-funded building, is the way I'm going to put it. And... Yeah, I know the old one ply of, toilet paper. And people think of horrible things, but don't. don't I, I'm not a criminal. <laughs> but, but I did. I lived in, in a building funded by governments, and, and of course, we had the one ply uh, toilet paper. And I swear you could use this to scratch up like fine jewelry and stuff. And it was definitely not good on the skin. And so, one of the first things I did when I lived there is I went and bought my own supply of toilet paper. Like, yes, you're going to give me that for free, but no amount of that is ever going to equal four or five good sheets of a good toilet paper. And it does, it, I mean, it leaves you feeling better. It leaves you healthier and it, it makes a significant difference to your life. So yes, if that's what brings you pleasure and it's going to allow you to come out and thinking, man, I enjoyed that trip and not say, well, man, that I suffered. Then yeah, by all means, you know, good toiletries, uh, toilet paper, toothpastes. I mean, I've seen people, or oh, you can use ash and this out of the, yeah, no, you could. You could. <laughs> but why? <laughs> but, but really? Did you save that much weight by not taking? Like, you can dehydrate to toothpaste. Toothpaste. Or, right? Doesn't weigh anything. <laughs> right? Nobody ever broke their back carrying toothpaste. Like, and I'm not going to lie. I've tried the old charcoal. You know, you chew some up and you scrub with a little stick that's soft that you've chewed up. You know what? You can do it. And I did it simply to see what it was like. Probably would never do it again unless circumstances dictated that I had no other method to clean my teeth. Like, I would debate just walking back out of the woods to get back in my vehicle and go get a toothbrush. Because it's just so much nicer. Yeah, you can do that. It, it's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it, there are other options out there, people. Uh so no, good toiletries, uh, take that up in time, the soap that you enjoy, the toothpaste that, that you know, actually works and you enjoy. Uh, you know, these are great things. They're luxury items. Can you do without it? 100%. For sure. Could you? 
That's another question. <laughs> and s staying on the hygiene thing, something else Steve mentioned here was uh, one of the luxury items he has but doesn't get to use that often is one of those solar showers. Like me, I'm a big cloth washer, not going to lie when I'm out in the woods, but I could see, uh, especially like when we used to work with natural resources and you go out to the camps and stuff, you'd be out there for two weeks. About day six, shower's really looking good. Like... There's nothing like a nice shower after a bunch of days in grimy, usually humid weather. And let's face it, most of us go camping during the summer when the humidity is going to be up. You're going to get, even at night, if the temperature's down, humidity's up, you get that kind of cold moisture, collects on your skin, just leaves you feeling gross. Yes, you can use the man wipes like we've talked about in, uh, or the one man wipes or whatever that just happens to be the brand name I have over there. Like the big single sheets of body wash things. You can use them. They work for a while. Uh, I like to bring a face cloth and some soap, boil up some water, and I can kind of do the cloth washing thing. Works good. It's great for some time or for a time, but at a certain point, you're just like, I want a shower or a bath or something like that. And that's another option. I often will just hop in the river and clean myself up. Once again, why I bring the cloth, but still at a certain point, you just cannot beat hot water and a shower. Uh, yeah, for me personally, at some point, at probably around day three is as far as I'm going, I'm ending up in the lake. Like, if it's nice enough, I'm in there every night, don't get me wrong, and that's probably a good part of the day. But yeah, if I'm out three nights and I haven't gotten a good bath, then I'm actually, like, physically uncomfortable, and I'm not going much further. And I, you know, I don't care how manly you are or how, how not manly you are. Like, you have a comfort point, and if you pass that, you're actually going to find, like, a physical... You're going to feel raw, sore, uncomfortable. It's going to it's going to affect you. So figure out what you need and, and, and maintain that. Like good health. We've talked about it before. Good boots. I mean, we're not calling boots or good footwear a luxury by any means. Like that is a thing. You, you need to do that. You're, you're walking in the woods. Have something solid on your feet 100%. Um, I know one that you had under that I, as soon as you said it, I'm like, I'm not even sure it's a luxury anymore. We use it so much. But uh, I anyway, assume it was that. Know. Yes. <laughs> so, so this is an item that I, I think I used first, and I mentioned it to, to you and and Robert. Like Ben was the guy where I was like, "Oh my god, that that's amazing! I want one of those." So I immediately went out and bought one the next time. Yeah, I bought mine for my wife, and I think she may have used it once, but I've used it quite a bit, <laughs> and it is the best thing ever. I. I know somebody with the free bur burner one, and that I want that now. I, I I'm super guess. Well, you can almost cook something on that one, can you not? You can, and I I I would venture to guess that you could probably take a few degrees warmth in like a, in the hot tent. If you didn't have a stove, just to brought that in and lit it. Those three candles alone, hitting that metal plate on top, would create enough heat to take a few degrees out, uh, kill the chill for sure. There. So any, any of our oh she's not here any of our video watchers, um, you can clearly see here what we're talking about. Oh, it's the UCL. One of these. Uh, there we go. We'll turn the light off. Candle. Lantern. I mean that thing and actually produces a fair amount of light. It doesn't yeah. look like it does right now, simply because I have the monitor on and all that good nonsense. But if you're out in the woods, and this is where it came into play with us, was. Uh, Especially if you're hammock camping, you can string it up between two hammocks. And it allows a little bit of white between you. And that's where I thought it shined. And I'm sorry, Ben, I don't know if I cut you off because I took my headset off. I apologize. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it, it gives you a little bit of light to work by. So if you need, you're getting dressed or undressed, it's, you're not flooded with light. Like, trust me, it's not a lot, but it's no. plenty. Uh, but if you get up and you want to not go to the bathroom close to your site... It, it makes it really easy to find your, your your hammock without tripping over something. You know, it really does help. Uh, I've been out with with buddies, my buddy Chris, and we went out and he had it set up in the in the outhouse in Gedgey, and it was just great. Like at night when you went up there, you weren't sitting in the pitch dark. You had somewhere to sit with a nice glow. It was great. Um, it is it is a luxury item, one hundred percent, but it is darn near a necessity now that I've had one. And, uh, and truthfully, they last a long time. I think the candles say they last nine hours or something like that. And this is all the candles are. They're specialty candles. Uh, I'm sure Ben, much like myself, has tried molding his own. 
I believe we've been talking about that last couple of days. Um, Total failure. I just cleaned it up tonight. I'm going to try again. But yeah. But yeah, and they're not overly expensive to buy if you just want to go that way. It just happens to be that we like to try and do things ourselves. But yeah, that thing has become almost an essential for me. I literally look for it. Uh, I already think about when I'm packing my bag. Oh yeah, I'm going to take this and this is how I'm going to use it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. No, it is It is a great little item and I really do enjoy it. Um, so, but yeah, any type of like additional lighting... Things that just make around the campsite, especially at night, a little bit easier. Um, something else, uh, sort of align that thing, like at night, uh, any musical instrument. Yep. Now, I personally am musically dead. <laughs> I play but a guitar, and I very rarely take it with me unless I know I'm going someplace easy to take it. And then it, I absolutely love it, in all honesty. But... Uh, no, when I've gone out and seen people, I'm kind of jealous of them. Like they, they have a skill, they have something, and it, it, it passes the time, and it kind of brings everyone a little bit of enjoyment. If you could get down to like a harmonica, or any small wood or wind instrument, would be pretty easy to do, right? Uh, maybe even a ukulele, something a little bit smaller than your full size guitar, would be pretty cool. Uh, but. Um. One last thing that Steve had mentioned in the comments, because it's a shout-out, and I did want to bring it out. Uh, if you're still listening, Steve, here's your shout-out, bud. So, shout-out to Ben Jolly. He had an awesome setup one time. Winter camping, 2019. Had a full bar serving cocktails with garnishes and cooked a gorgeous lasagna. Like, that's five-star living there in my books. I that That's beyond luxury. I, you're actually living better than I live my day-to-day -day life. But... That, that was a luxury. They went out with some friends. That was their contribution. I mean, that's kind of a neat thing all on its own. Yeah, I've been talking to Ben Jolly for years. I've never actually met the man, which is is kind of disappointing, honestly. <laughs> Much the same. I chatted to him quite a bit. Uh, I think I got to know him a little bit through the Nova Scotia Bushcraft Facebook page or either the... I might have met him at the first gathering. We might have seen him there. I can't remember. But, I mean, I wouldn't... I don't know now. But it, uh, it was, I didn't even there. Uh, but it was shortly thereafter that I started seeing his posts and stuff. So, so um, you had something else that was a bit musically inclined. That we could just oh yes, this is something that Mel and I bring a lot, or I shouldn't say a lot. Basically, every time we go out, and it's just a simple little crank radio. We like it that you can crank it. You don't have to worry about the batteries. It does come with a little flashlight. We never use that, but it's just a little bit of music that we can pull the antenna out, good old-fashioned antenna, so you get lots of reception, tune something in, and it just makes a little bit of noise while you're there. If you want to listen to some music, listen to a talk show, whatever happens to be on, it's just a little bit of background noise if that's your thing. We like it at night. It's soothing to go to sleep. Sometimes it'll cover up the sound of other things, like if you've got a bunch of mosquitoes buzzing around your netting or the, sometimes the waterfall. It just adds a different noise to the background if you're not a white noise kind of person like i like the white noise of the waterfall it's not for everyone it could drive you insane i could see that you know what i mean i've brought people out there uh and i mentioned this to you when we went out i'm like some people cannot stand the sound of the waterfall it's intense and some people just go like nope i'm done i'm out and they have left you know what i mean so it does break I, up that kind of stuff i grew up with uh we built a cabin right on the side of a river eventually the river decided it couldn't stay there but um yeah i can remember going to sleep at night because my my bed was right in front of like this big picture window and you had the water just going by only like 20 feet maybe out and it, it was so soothing i loved it um but yeah it's not for everyone no and that that's fine um now one more thing from the comments uh jeremy graham and i know you had this on your list anyway ben that's why i'm bringing you up camp chair yes so why don't you go right for that one ben because I am one of the peons that doesn't own one. So, yeah, camp chairs. Uh, a lot of the people I camp with now, I think we almost all, except Robert, I'm sorry, will have to fix this in the very near future. Uh, folding camp chairs, little lightweight folding camp chairs. Uh, I love taking it, and, you know, it makes a huge difference. It, it all fits in a, a tiny bag. I can strap it to the outside of my bag. Oftentimes, I can poke it inside my bag. I throw 
four little tennis balls in, in it to prevent the feet from sinking into ground, which has worked really great. Uh, but yeah, there it is. You you just popped up the next thing there. I didn't There's even a, realize it was on this one. Uh -oh. oh, it's oh, it's part of that. It's that part kit. of this kit. Oh, sold separately. It says it right down below. Okay, yeah. So this that little net thing with the four corners that goes on your feet distributes the weight and helps prevent it from sitting sinking in the sand, uh, soft soil, uh, even snow potentially. And it may it. I'm, I haven't tried it, but I did play with one inside of a house, and it seems like such an awesome idea. And it would fold up so much smaller than my four tennis balls. So I, uh, it's on my thing I need uh, for sure. But yeah, these uh, I've gone with a bunch of people. We've all taken it and sitting around a fire and having somewhere comfortable to sit. It is a game changer. It is a luxury item. Sitting on a stump. Sounds like a great idea until you get out there and there is no stumps and they're wet and they're soaking that you can't find. And yeah, it's just, you know, it's, you can move it. You can get out of the smoke. It's just convenient and it's, it's, it's hard to beat. And much hard. like Chris was saying there, the reason I don't have one was the reason he, uh, I mentioned down here. He's a bigger dude. I'm a bigger dude. Uh, he's got one that's 350 max weight. That's kind of what I'm looking at, too. That one that we just brought up is 300 pound max weight, so I might be able to skimp by on that one. I'm going to try because it's a little bit more packable than uh, going to the 350 ones, but same kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's, um, let's see, they don't work in the sand correctly, at least not the ones I have. Maybe because I'm 220 pounds, but damn disappointing. You're, you're claiming yourself as a bigger dude at 220 pounds, bud. I haven't been 220 since I was 11 years old. Well, let that sink in. <laughs> <laughs> but Here, you... I am thinking at, at 210, I'm, I'm a lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> but, but again, I have been 330, 340. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's a huge difference in that. And yeah, at, when I was in the 300 pound range, it was hard to find a chair that didn't just fail after a few months. Like, yeah, they'll take it for a while, but the pins go yeah. and the this where they're joined, the the it just snaps. Well, Steve can attest to this one. Our little gathering. I did bring one of these foldable camp chairs, and I was like, "Guess what, boys? I brought a chair." Because first time, how long was I in that bend? Did I make it a half hour? Before I literally just gave up and drilled it into the woods because it broke all apart in like three spots. <laughs> terrible <laughs> doctor says 220 is overweight yeah i know and for my height i'm supposed to be 185 never gonna happen but i understand where you're coming from i i tried to get to 185 and it, it was a struggle uh it, it was i don't think i'll ever make it uh and i wasn't overly happy at that weight so you know i i've looked at bmi Honestly, I think it's a little like the lunch. Not everyone is meant to fit one body type. Some of us are just a little bigger bone, and some of us just don't mind that extra little couple of pounds. I was going to say, I chatted to a, like a doctor about this once, too, and they're like, there's so many more factors you have to take into account. Like, what's your genetics? What's your bone structure? What's your uh, origin? Like, what, what's your ethnicity, I guess? Like, this all has stuff to play into it. And, yeah, it's more to just saying, oh, you're five... 10, 5, 11, you should weigh 185 pounds. Like, there's way more to it than that. And I guarantee you, every bodybuilder is way outside of their BMI. Like, every good bodybuilder has enough muscle mass that they put themselves overweight. And I've seen an interesting thing saying, if you're a 300-pound man, you're an athlete. Because the average person can't carry that kind of weight around. Like, you, you actually have the muscle and bone structure of a stronger person, Right. Can't you just got to get rid of the fluffy tissue around it. That fluffy tissue around you is a lot of extra, extra <laughs> exercise you're doing, but you're still able to walk. You still do the two stuff. So, like, that's impressive. That extra weight makes, you know, if you struck that on somebody who'd never had that weight, they would struggle to get through the day, like, really hard. They would. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so two things from the comments about chairs, uh, just so we don't dwell on it too much. We'll wrap these ones up pretty quick. First one from Carl, great camping hack. Wrap your sleeping bag around your chair like an underquilt. Keeps your back nice and warm in those cool areas. And Chris had a question. How do you guys feel about a bush chair, some sticks, and pre-sewn canvas? I've actually done this, uh, minus the pre-sewn canvas. I've just used to build bush chairs, you know, like a little three-point chair, 
a little bit of cordage, slap something on top of it, usually stone, something like that, and that gives you a place to sit. Uh, was my go-to for ages? Camp chair superior. <laughs> That's all I can say. For the cost and size of taking it with you, I think I'd just go camp chair. The skill is neat. If you can do it, it's a great skill. Because uh, you never know when your actual, you know, your folding chair gets lost, broken, damaged, forgotten. Um, and being able to do it. But for outright comfort, it's it's hard. Even hammocks. Like, I use hammocks a lot. And honestly, if you have a hammock, you don't need to take a chair. You can sit in a hammock. But the edge of that hammock does tend to build pressure underneath your knees. Mm -hmm. Depending on how you're sitting in it, and next thing you know, you're like, that's not so comfortable. So now your feet are inside the hammock. Well, next thing you know, you're asleep. <laughs> so if hey, you're camping trip went out. Went out yeah. <laughs> if you're planning to staying up and chatting with your buddy, it's counterproductive. It's just a, a statement. <laughs> but uh, no, it's a great skill. Uh, I think everyone should know how to do it, make one. Uh, it, it is good practice. Uh, but those folding chairs, they are a luxury, but they are very comfortable and fun luxury. So, what else is on your list there, uh, Ben? We we talked chair. I guess we're back to me now, are we? Yeah, we're we'll going with you because I think the next one I want you actually have a better example. So, okay. So I actually hit my wife up. Uh, she's been on the show before in the past. I said as we were talking about this, we were out to dinner. So what what do you think is a luxury item? And some of the things she came up with, I was like, you know what? That's actually pretty neat. I never thought about that. And one of the first things she said, aside from toilet paper was uh, just some camp shoes. And these are the ones she wears. They're just uh, an over-aggressive water shoe. The second she lands at a campsite, she is done with the uh, binds of human society, if you will. She wants to throw on something that's comfortable on her feet. She likes to go barefoot, don't get me wrong. But uh, as we get older, we find that it hurts our feet more, and there's more of a chance of rolling our ankles, and yada, yada, yada. So camp shoes it is. And that's her go-to. Like, literally, the second that we sit down, the packs drop, camp shoes come out, now she's good to go. Um, or flip-flops or something like that. But something light on her feet that she can still bum around on the rocks, but is comfortable. That's her luxury item. It's always in her bag, regardless of where we go, unless we're doing, you know, like colder weather camping. Then not so much. And a lot of people do like the uh, the camp shoe, something lightweight, easy to slip on and off, very comfortable. I've often used the cheap Crocs, even dollar store Crocs work fine. Uh, yes, they're slippery. Yes, they're not the best thing in the woods. But honestly, if you're just bumming around camp or just going down to get some water and you don't worry, if you want to worry about getting your feet wet, perfect thing to throw on your feet. Works good. Uh, doesn't weigh a lot. And uh, if it breaks, it's no big deal. Drag it out. It's not, you're not carrying a ton of weight and toss them. They're easy to replace. Yeah. Five, six blocks at most. Uh, so, no, that's a great one. Uh, so what we've what have we covered here? We covered food. We've covered ways of cooking, like just more elaborate things. Uh, there's a, And there's a ton of stuff you could talk about in the cooking section. I had one in my, uh, my thought presses was a, a coffee press. Yeah. Now, for some people I've camped with, that is not a luxury. That's like an essential to them. But for a lot of us, I mean, you could do instant coffee. You can do tea. You can do that. But if that's what you're into is is, a, is like a better coffee, I mean, I'm not into coffee. Neither are you really? I drink no. tea, man. That's I can drink a coffee. Don't get me wrong. But tea is my thing. But I've camped with a ton of people who are big coffee drinkers. And they bring in elaborate coffee systems. Uh, and because that is the, the luxury, that's what brings them like a huge enjoyment while they're out there is knowing that, yeah, I'm still having like a gourmet version coffee. Uh, it's hard to not, not that. That's your thing, right? That's what you bring comfort into. And they're relatively inexpensive. You know what I mean? I mean, you can get very elaborate, high priced coffee presses and things like that. But I'm, I'm thinking like just... For the basic person, an acrylic coffee press, they're not much money. I think I've seen them for around 20 bucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a ton of them. And, um, yeah. I've eaten, I know they're little, like, steel ones um, that I've seen in uh, Value Village and stuff. And you always see them in there. So there's plenty of things you can get. You, you don't have to spend a ton of money, but it makes... I mean, this was literally just a quick Amazon search, twenty four ninety eight. It's a steel, steel one. I, I'd be more apt to grab steel than acrylic, personally. I'm sure you're much the same, Ben. Uh, it's just a little more durable, a little heavier. I get that, but I, I trade off the durability. 
So yeah, a ton of things in the cooking area you can take that makes a luxury. I mean, some people might decide to take their collapsible uh, roasty sticks. I'm perfectly happy with cutting my own when I'm in there. But if that's the thing that brings you happiness, you know. Funny enough, that's Mel. I'm like you. I don't mind cutting a roast stick. All good. She has a collapsible one. Comes with her. I'm like, we can just make the mullion in there. She's nope. Absolutely not. I'm taking this. It just works. It's light. It's simple. She packs it in. That's her thing. Um, Steve over here saying spices. Once again with the food thing. Spices are a big thing a lot of people forget about. Once again, you're back to that. Make your food taste good. Make it bring you joy. Yeah. I have a little leather wraps kit that I take with me. It, it all fits inside. It fits in my coffee pot or my, not my, 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 my cup, my titanium cup, which goes in my titanium pot and it all it all nests together and it and it all centers around that spice kit um and it makes the world a difference you know a bit of pepper a bit of salt maybe some garlic onion powder whatever you, you've got this few spices that makes a difference in your life take them uh it doesn't hurt and it makes makes it that much better so for, sh for sure so um, some of the other stuff i have here i'm kind of going to go through a real quick tech window if you're good with that ben because uh, yeah, the next it. couple items I have are tech. I know some of yours are tech. Yours are probably going to be a little bit more in-depth, so I'm just going to kind of bullet stream these ones if that's good with you. Go ahead. So one is Mel's. This is just her little silicone camp light. I mean, we all have flashlights, stuff like this. This is her go-to. Um, it's a little low on charge right now, but it is rechargeable. It's waterproof. It works in the tent. It can set up. Like I said, it's, it's not really great right now because the battery's a little dead, but three settings this is her thing it's basically indestructible uh takes very little it can charge off another thing that i'm going to be showing here and she loves it you know what i mean especially when we're tent camping it just sits in that little net thing gives tons of light in the camp uh in the tent willie can play with it in the river it'll light up stuff like that so that's one of her things um now like i said the charging of that two things i brought out was our little solar panel, and we had talked about these in the past, and the battery bank that goes with it so I can build that charge up. That's a luxury yeah. item for me. Uh, segwaying into Ben's thing a little bit, use this to charge some of our other luxury items. Um, and the last big thing for Melissa was her ebook reader. Melissa is a huge reader, loves to read. Sometimes it's not practical to take a paperback, or if you're like Melissa, she could literally burn through a full-size paperback in a day if you really want to sit down and crank on it she basically speed reads and once she gets going she just keeps going so she usually on average takes like four or five books with us if we're going camping for two three days and she just cranks it onto one of these this thing's battery is astronomical like it's like 60 hours or something before it needs to be recharged it's just a little black and white uh e-reader i don't know if it's on or not i i i legitimately don't know how this thing works to be perfectly honest, that's my my ability to read. But anyway, yeah, like it, it's just one of these monochrome readers, and it takes literally no power. Um, and that is a must-have for her. Like, if she doesn't have it, there is no camping trip. I, I used to read a ton. I've always wanted one of those. Um, and if that's like the e, e, the monochrome, like you say, oftentimes those are actually based on the number of pages, not even hours. So each time you flip a page, just doesn't really. And you could be right, Ben. I just took a guess because I know she has literally burnt through like six books when we were right. out for a couple days. And, and it's I just mean, what they can do. Um, you mentioned power supplies, so this is a, a neat little one, and this combines a couple of things. This is a hand warmer, as well as a battery power mm. uh, block, and a hand warmer. I, I, you know, I mean, whether it's the chemical ones, the Zippo ones uh i have ones that burn like little fuel rods there's a bunch of types out there that is like a bit of a luxury item but like if you're cold be able to take that that warming thing yeah I, i've seen those i like them uh but something that you know you can warm up i know a lot of guys that won't even go in the woods without a hand warmer even just the chemical packs like you said those things are amazing yeah uh i throw a couple of those sometimes in my sleeping bag on a cold night you know Stick them down your feet. If your feet are warm in the sleeping bag, you're warm. It, it's just one of those things. Um, the other things we, I was going to mention, and I know, you know, we all bring our phones. Our phone is a luxury. I don't want to show what anyone says. 
it gives you the the book, the movie, the compass, the the GPS, all that is really cool. Uh, but it's a great backup, and we've always said it's kind of an essential. Uh, I now have, and I mean, it won't always be in this format, but I have this this here now that I would take, and it's it's a, it's my sling bag with all my camera gear, and that is a luxury to me. I don't need it to go out and enjoy it, but it allows me to capture my memories. It allows me to record things, and it. it it gives me an activity to do. So for when I'm out, I mean, I can literally spend hours just looking at stuff. And I'll be perfectly happy. I can photo it or video it or do something with it in addition. That's just great. So, you know, a simple camera. Uh, or I can now have a drone, which I've been playing with. Things like that. That's Those are definitely luxury items. But bring so much more to the trip. So some, you know something else there for sure so a question from the comments chris loveless asks how long does the electric hand warmer last does a hand warmer ben uh i haven't really tested it i think when i got it it said it would last like a couple of hours on high and it was like four or five on low i believe um yeah ten thousand milliamp hours it it doesn't get hot, hot, but it gets warm to the touch, and it, it's definitely a nice thing to have. Uh, I gave it to my daughter a while back to take in the woods, and she complained it didn't really charge her phone, but it was getting kind of hot. Had it on the wrong setting? You had the hand warmer part of it on. Uh, so uh, it does a few jobs well, uh, so that's why I take it with me. It's just I know when I'm going, if I need to, need to be able to charge up. Uh, like I can probably charge my drone or it definitely charged the camera a couple times with it. Uh, it can charge up the phone. Um, and like the phone for me, uh, in fact, part of the reason I have the camera not now is because I went out with my phone two or three times and killed it making videos. And my wife's like, you can't do that. You have to stop killing your phone. Yeah, because, sorry, go ahead. Something happens, I need to get hold of you or you need to be able to get hold of me to come you know, gets either come help you or get someone to help you. So now I have more camera gear because she doesn't want me wasting my power taking photos when that could be my only means of survival. And that's a real true thing. Like you don't want to jeopardize your lifeline. Um, one last thing from the comments, because it's kind of a funny luxury item, but it is a luxury item all the same. Uh, Steve said, maybe if you're car camping or you're pulling a sled, battery-operated chainsaw. Um, for me, just a chainsaw in general. I don't own a battery-operated chainsaw. I like the idea. But I have a little still, which probably doesn't weigh a whole lot more than a battery-operated chainsaw. And I guess I'm old-fashioned. I like to pollute, so... <laughs> I just never upgraded to a battery powered one. I, I really like the idea and I've actually been looking at and I have really wanted to get the Greenworks 80 volt just because I have the lawnmower, the leaf blower mm. and the weed whacker and it was all the same battery system and I thought it would be great. But uh, Home Hardware had on sale the Radley 20 volt one and it doesn't look too bad and you know zip up a bit of firewood for camp at night or the other thing is if you're going backwoods like me and you were hoping to do with some of our rigs mm -hmm. sometimes you come across a down tree you just need to get it out of the way and you can't move it by yourself in one piece and i mean i know that seems hard to believe that me and robert couldn't move a single tree the <laughs> finest specimens of athletic prowess here <clears throat> but occasionally that does happen i mean even here in nova scotia and bc i'd understand it yeah like 10 men and could move some of those trees <laughs> seriously the winds Honestly, it may not be the weight. It could just be the whims getting tangled in and stuff. Great big uh, popple or something like that or trembling aspen, whatever you want to call it. Those things can get tied up, especially if it's a kind of grown-in little trail. And then it's a great luxury item because now you're not out there with an axe or a handsaw. Yeah. I've, uh, the other thought I've even had, and this is one I'm thinking of throwing in, and I probably shouldn't say it alive, but it's an angle grinder. Uh... I know what you're thinking. Why? But if you ever ended up in a spot, and this is the thing I picture, sometimes people gate roads up, and, and I understand they don't want me going in. But if I've already gotten into it, I'm trying to get out, and they've gated me so that I can't get out, 
Now we've got a problem, because if I need to get out, I'm coming out one way or the other. I literally have a set of bolt cutters in my toolbox. Yeah. I've run and it, I not so much on the camping aspect, but when I worked uh, with DNR, I've gone in to do, like, WAPs or look for fires or something like that. Been up there a couple hours, come back, and yeah, totally gated in. All you do is you call the RCMP, tell them where you're at, tell them that you're busting the lock, and off you go. You know what I mean? Like, at least you reported it. Call me later for the price of the padlock, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pretty much. Just tell the bill, you know, the owner that I apologize, I was up there, I'm stuck. Uh, bill me for the cost of the lock, but I, I gotta get out, you know what I mean? Yeah, I ain't staying here any longer, so. <laughs> Your choices are, come get me, <laughs> now, <laughs> Or I'm taking you along. <laughs> but. No, no, and that that's true. That does happen, especially like with overlanding and deep woods exploring. It's pretty easy to get up into a back road that spiders out and you're gone most of the day and you come back only to find out maybe somebody had been logging up in there on a different one of those routes and then came out and locked the gate behind them. Uh, so it's always a good idea to try and look for gates as you're going in. Sometimes not possible, especially if you're driving around at night. I've done this. Not the smartest move, I openly admit. Uh, but yeah, if you can glance at a gate and see if it's commonly used, if the road's commonly used, you can sometimes alleviate some of the problem, but not all the time. Sometimes it's just bam, you know what I mean? And there it's, there it is. Well, I got bored a few weekends ago when gas was affordable and you could do things like this. And, uh, I said like, according to the map, there's a road that goes from here to there. And I said, I want to try it. So we went back there and we were, we were back there like 45 minutes we traveled through a lot of roads. And I think the only thing that had gone back there before was a little side-by-side. -side. And you could see the trail, and I'm, like, following it. In a couple of places, he went up the sides of, like, uh, I want to say, like, a quarry type, like mm -hmm. a dugout section. And I went up and tried, and, of course, I got semi-stuck going up. And I'm like, okay, I can't make it up that hill. <laughs> so I came back, went back on the road, went up. And there was four or five side trails, and we did a couple of them. And then we were, Missy's like, the next one should bring us to a road. Like, we should be able to get off here. I'm like, oh, awesome. We got up there. She said, what if it's gated? I'm like, I don't know. Because <laughs> we weren't prepared for that. Now, fortunately, it wasn't. And I didn't really want to have to turn around and go back that road. We had enough adventure coming in. I didn't want to repeat some of it. Um, so you never know. Like Just because you came in on a non-gated road doesn't mean you're going to hit a non-gated road on the other end of it. And to be uh, fair, I run into that a ton on the ATV. Uh, you'll get into places and then you're like following the maps and like I do have the Garmin ATV trails in Nova Scotia and they're yeah. listed on there and all of a sudden halfway through it you see it's gated. You're just like well alright you can see people have clearly gone around but then you'll see that the property owners have put boulders up so you know they really don't want you to. So what do you do? Respectfully you turn around and now you just lost sometimes upwards of two three hours backtracking and finding a way around it it's kind of inconvenient but it does happen um so i've honestly thought of throwing one in there just in case of emergencies and honestly an angle grinder has got me out of a lot of trouble over the years so having one that's battery powered not just in the woods but just in general like angle grinder will cut things off and maybe maybe help you out when you need it <laughs> and jeremy one of his luxury items was the silky pocket boy saw a little extra weight but a luxury item that is worth its weight tenfold at 7.4 ounces and funny enough you have a silky don't you no i have oh, an agua agua sorry <laughs> oriole 21 you have a 24 now uh awesome saw uh i i would call it comparable to the silky i've, I've used both uh, each have a, have their space. They're very convenient. Um, again, it's something that I almost always take a little a saw like that. It's just a great item, and it does make you know the job a lot easier. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a battery powered thing, but sometimes those are the luxuries that people want. Um, what else? Uh, geez, I have oh. one, and I was going to end off on this one, and we're getting around the forty five minute mark. So we'll start with this. We'll see where it takes us. It's a luxury, but it's also a necessity because I consider it a necessity and we have preached this on the channels um, multiple times, multiple episodes. However, there's still people out there that feel compelled not to take one with them when they go. That's why I'm including it in the luxury section. But you want to know what makes your life real easy? A good old common Bic lighter. 
You know what I mean? There's people that still go out there, oh, I'm going to the woods, I'm going to do everything with a ferro rod, or I'm going to use matches, or I'm going to use friction fire, or I'm going to use a magnifying glass, or I'm going to pray to the fire gods, whatever. When all you got to do is grab in your pocket, grab your lighter, and bam, you got fire. You know what I mean? If you want to do your ferro rods and your friction fires and all that good stuff, good on ya. Happy you're getting out there, happy you're practicing those skills, and I hope it works out for you. The reality is, a lot of people have gone into the woods expecting to make friction fires, and it ended up in cold nights. Ben and I, we went out on an adventure, uh, fairly knowledgeable people about doing this. We worked our guts out to try and get embers going. We had smoke a few times, we had embers a few times, but it just did not work out. Uh, we probably could have got it going if we kept working at it, but we were into it for a couple hours at that point. And you know what? Bonk. <laughs> the, the, the fire gods and the friction gods were not with us no uh, i think all it was was the humidity was up and where we were at that probably didn't play any good uh one of the bushcraft weekends you had the same problem didn't you yeah uh i can't remember which one it was but it was the one at smiley's there i i made the the friction fire for the demonstration no problem then we had the friction fire comp and i know what the problem was when I did my demonstration, if you noticed, I had rolled out a tarp and done everything on top of the tarp. And when they were doing theirs, they were doing it on top of the grass. And grass holds enough moisture and coldness that it is going to ruin your day. So that's what happened there. Moisture. That was a humid day. If anybody sees the video, it's on our channel. You can see me actually doing this demonstration. And you can tell I am drenched in sweat. Because the humidity was like 80%. It was 28 degrees with like felt 36 or something stupid with the humidity it was just a gross day not good for any kind of friction fire even like arcing fires like flint and steel not gonna work that great you reach in your pocket you grab your bic one little flick and bam you got fire you know what i mean it is a luxury item but it is a necessity as well if you're going into the woods and you're serious about bushcraft and camping or any of this hiking boating i don't care have a lighter it, it, it's a no-brainer yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, it's it's just a safety thing. I've seen an awesome TikTok on Vic Lighter where someone decided to make it a little bit more efficient. And he wrapped his in uh, wax twine, I believe it was. And uh, a, a couple of other things. And I had thrown a note in there. If you take a bit of cardboard, uh, box board is what you use, and a bit of electrical tape and wrap around that, you can make it a waterproof lighter. Yep. Uh, and that was a trick my grandfather showed me. And he showed me that when I was... A young teen or even even preteen and he had two or three done up and he threw them in his pack he threw one in his back in his pocket he had one pretty well everywhere so and his his thing is if he needed to have a fire going he was getting a fire going and if you get cold i think they preach this if you're really cold you're going to start losing dexterity you're going to lose capability next thing you know you won't get a fire going but you can probably get a lighter going and we tested it one day if in a pinch, if you can hold the lighter and rub it against something, you can get it the light. Yep. It's it's a bit of a trick to hit that that lever and, and move the wheel at the same time, but you can do it. Like just rubbing across your leg or up a tree or something. You can get it the light and then just get your thumb over that lever again. Uh, but yeah, figure figure it out, get a fire. I mean, don't put your life at risk. Here's one that I have taken before and, and it does usually require a light but Pack of cards. Yeah. If you're going, even by yourself, a game of solitaire, like there's different versions of solitaire. Great idea. Get to know a couple of these games. Sometimes you just get a crappy day. It's rainy, but it's nice. So you just kind of put your uh, hammock into porch mode or you set up a tarp outside your tent or whatever and put a blanket down, play some solitaire, listen to the brook, listen to the wind, listen to the animals around you, whatever. It passes the time, it keeps the mind busy, so you're not sitting there thinking of weird things, because that is something that can happen, but that's uh, a whole other show. <laughs> so, but cards are a huge survival item, and if anyone doesn't know this, this, this trick works 99.9% .9 of the time. If you get yourself really lost, and you start playing solitaire, guaranteed, at some point, someone's going to reach over your shoulder and say, listen, you got to put that black... Blackjack on that red king. Or red tent. <laughs> you're happy. Like, you, you missed that no, move. <laughs> that move. Bang. Like you're found. 
<sighs> and it's great if there's multiple people too. Uh, cards, there's something about cards. You know what I mean? It brings people together. It's one of those ice breaking activities. Everybody knows a game of cards, even if it's crazy eights, uh, go crib. fish, something like that. Crib. It's, it brings people together. It gets the chat flowing. I've often used cards in big groups when I've taught courses, especially like if we're staying on, uh, in a barracks or something like that after the fact, get everybody together, throw a couple of decks cards down and have yourself like literally a, a poker tournament or a crib tournament or just couples, uh, or, you know, two player solitaire, whatever you want to call a tournament. It gets people talking. It makes people happy. It keeps the mind going. It, it, they're just awesome for what they are. And you don't like, you can get some really nice small packs of cards, Mel has, once again, this was in her pack, is the go-to. It's like, it's the size of a matchbox, this pack of cards. And we've played with them quite a bit. Like, you know, they're a little funky. You can hold an entire deck in your fingertips, but you can play with them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great one. You reading something else comments? Yep, just seeing here. Chris Loveless, I use duct tape in all my lighters and uh, run a twine up the side. Uh... Oh, something from Steve here. Seen this in a few other videos. Feather down sleeping booties. Uh, and one of our buddies, Jeremy there, Lone Wolf 902 He has a set. You can see them in some of his videos. And you know what? I've I actually have, looked at these. Whoops. I have a set. My wife has a set. They're awesome. That's what I mean. Like, the, they're, they're a thing. They really are awesome, especially if you get the cold feet syndrome when you're sleeping in a hammock or something like that. Pretty much alleviates that problem. Yeah. Um, let's see. Jeremy, all men totally agree with the Bic Lighter is definitely the way to go. I'm experienced with several different starting methods, but when it's all said and done, Bic Lighter is the safest backups. And then Steve, Reverse Crib, Game of Fools, Ben, and Chris Loveland mentioned uh, Harmonica. Chris, we had talked about that right at the start of the show. I know you didn't get to join us right at the start. We talked about some instruments and stuff like that, and you're absolutely right. Harmonica, it's one of those things that breaks up monotony, and you can fit it in your pocket. I just can't play one. Like, I, I'm still working on the old bone harp. Like, toy, 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 toy. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's the level I'm at. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, all great points. Uh, what Do you have anything else there, Ben? So, this is one I take so often. And, and, you, and you know me, I'm not a huge drinker. But, oftentimes, every night I have a special drink. And what I do is I go down to the liquor store and I buy like a different beer, a different cooler, a different something, or I'll buy a good bottle of something. It doesn't have to be a big one and I'll take it. And that's what I'm going to have. Sometimes I'll just d divvy it up in small flasks or something. So I'm not over drinking, but yeah, that is something that I treat myself with at the end of the night when I'm sitting and chatting with my buddies or having, you know, have a drink. And it doesn't have to be a lot, just something that, that I normally wouldn't have that's a little special. And I only really do these types of drinks when I'm camping. Uh, that's, that's the only tr time I treat myself with that. So that's one for me. One of the best things in the world, in my mind, and I'm I'm reaching pretty far out there now. I can remember it from my younger-ish days, quote-unquote. Um, Real primitive sleeping. This is back when I was, you know, thinking surviving was better than bushcrafting. And I, I like to push myself to the edge of, what can I get away with? But laying in a field beside a fire on a wool blanket, like cowboy style is what you're picturing here, with a little glass of scotch, scotch and a cigar. Like that, that was amazing. And I don't condone smoking or drinking. If that's your thing, good on you. If it's not, absolutely fine too. But that... Still was a vivid memory in my mind, kind of laying back, looking up at the stars, looking at the Milky Way, because you're way out in the middle of nowhere. There's none of the lights around bugging you. Sky's crystal clear. You can see amazing things, and you're just sipping away on a nice scotch, little puff on a good cigar. It was great. I've uh, Since, I don't really smoke cigars a whole lot every now and then. Real fancy occasion or something. Uh, but I still do enjoy the scotch. And... Much like yourself, it's just that final little nightcap. You never indulge too much. You don't want to actually be drunk in the woods by yourself. Uh, there's lots of people that do that, but it's not really the best situation to be in in case something happens. Even if you got a couple buddies with you, it's still not great, especially if you don't have an easy out. If you want to do the drinking, make sure that an ambulance can get to you in a relatively easy fashion. Just in case. Hopefully you never need it. It's never a thing, but just in case. And, but and yeah. 
if you overindulge in that particular thing, the next day is never as good <sighs> as you want. I have been hung over trying to break down a camp, and you know what? I debated leaving it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, it's $100. only stuff. I'll buy more. $500 a year is just not worth it. <laughs> I'll come back someday for this, but not today. <laughs> uh... Well, so Steve, uh, as far as luxury, are some of the cool apps. Out oh, as far as luxury, there are some cool apps out there. Everything from GPS, trail apps to uh, plan identification, mushroom identification, fun stuff, cool and entertaining, but a luxury. And you're absolutely right. And this comes back to the phone technology. Uh, it's a luxury because it it's almost unlimited possibilities what you can do with a phone, especially if you get a little internet connection. You can use these apps, you can read your books, you can GPS, you can play games, you can shoot videos, pictures. It's literally an unlimited source of entertainment. Me and Steve, uh, and I'm sure he'll back me up this, we had a pretty fun time, other than when he was avoiding threats from my daughter, just looking up fungus with an app on a phone and it was a great time like we went around and we found i'd say 30 or 40 different types of fungus like mushrooms mm -hmm. and stuff and identified it and it was a lot of fun so. and that's the thing and there is apps for mushrooms there's apps for flowers trees rocks. once again rocks geology is a big thing like we don't People that aren't into geology don't understand it, but geology is a thing. I knew a buddy, a still friend of mine, absolutely adamant about geology. Like, the guy is borderline obsessed with it, but that's his thing. That's his passion. He loves it. Um, and I mean, that that's his luxury. You know what I mean? He would take geology books. Uh, now I imagine he'd probably take apps and stuff, much like you folks are talking about. But that was his thing. He would take, like, geology books, and he would try to identify minerals and stuff like that while we were out just bumming around the woods. I uh, I know a couple of guys who, who routinely take um, pans for gold. Yeah. Just anywhere there's a river, you can pan a little bit of gold. Uh, I worked with a lady. She did gold panning a little bit. Uh, I don't know where she ever went with it. Don't get me wrong, but I understand the thing. And that's what she used to do. Just, I don't know if she would take it with her, but if she knew we were going somewhere for the day, working in a park or something. Uh, and I'm thinking specifically around Moose River Gold Mine, because, you know, funny enough, it was a gold mine. This is the first time I've ever seen anybody pan for gold is where the story's going. And anyway, that was her thing. She used to pan for gold here and there. I, there's a ton of spots in Nova Scotia you can pan for gold and get gold fairly regularly. Uh, maybe not in huge quantities, but definitely uh, you can get some. So, I mean, I think we've listed a, a, a fair number, and by no means did, you, did we capture it all. But, yeah, entertainment, <laughs> uh, additional food, uh, apps, books, uh, all these things are great luxury items, and they add to the trip. And if they add to the trip, um, they're pretty good. A good rule of thumb, limit your luxury items to one or two. If you overindulge, it ruins it at some point. Yeah. So pa pack your essentials and then choose that one, two, maybe three, depending on what you're doing. Uh, some of these items we met mentioned are much closer to essentials than... Um, <laughs> to me, this is not a luxury. This is my go-to... Uh, originally when I bought it, it was a luxury, the, the little lamp thing again. But now that that's a go-to for me. I, I don't even consider that a luxury item. That's in my pack. Yeah. Toilet paper. Not a luxury to me. That's but, in my pack. <laughs> that's a necessity. Right? I don't even go for a walk with a toilet paper anymore. Like that. It makes right? a good fire starter, if nothing else. I mean... You only get caught once <laughs> without your toilet paper that you, you figure out, I'm never doing this again. Okay, I know we're at 58 minutes. Very short story. Once again, I draw a lot from natural resources because that was the reason I get out in the woods 90% of the time. On a fire, you want to know how you can identify who has toilet paper and who does not? It's because at the end of the day, who has both their socks or both sleeves on their shirts? Because that was the go-to items. If it was the end of the day, usually it was a sock because you didn't want to rip up your shirt. If it was the start of the day, you took the sleeve, like from here down, off your shirt. You usually get two uses out of it because you didn't want to take your socks away because that would lead to chafing. <laughs> but it was a thing. Like on bigger fires, you could totally tell who had toilet paper and who didn't. And who had toilet paper the next day. <laughs> Pockets were another big one. 
pockets. Yeah, if you can pull the pockets out. Now, see, I don't want to go spilling the government secrets here. A lot of times, this was back when we had coveralls, uh, you're supposed to wear proper gear and stuff under the coveralls, but it was not uncommon in the summer, especially like August, early September. Sometimes people would go with a little less under the coveralls. You might get an undershirt and some underwear, <laughs> and you were wearing your coveralls, and that's how you went to fight the fire. So you couldn't really take the pockets out of the coveralls, because you're talking about $500 coveralls, right? They're no-mix coveralls. But yes, pockets were a thing for those of us that actually wore full clothes under them. Uh, so, but uh Similar story, and uh, th this nearly got me in a bit of trouble, and, and you'll understand in the story. Search and Rescue, uh, our group went out and we got coveralls. They're orange coveralls. They're very nice. And somebody started questioning, because I was health and safety, so I was the safety officer for the site, and said, who's making sure that the clothes they're wearing under it is sufficient? Like, they didn't want people wearing jeans. They didn't want this. They want, didn't want that. And I said, I am not checking what somebody wears under the coveralls. It's, that's their problem. I'm not checking. Mm. And one of the girls looked at me. She said, if you ask, I'll show. And I'm like, no. Because <laughs> I knew she probably wasn't wearing anything and I was just going to get in trouble for that. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Sometimes it's a setup. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a trap. <laughs> I see that a mile away. I'm going to get in shit. <laughs> so that that's the thing. Uh, but no. Uh, great things, uh, like we, I mentioned my camera gear, the only other thing I could throw in there is maybe a tripod or a special stand, things like that, certain accessories. Uh, but all these things add to your trip. So when you're doing it, like I say, you don't want to take too many luxury items. That's how you fill your, your 60, 70, 100 liter pack uh, with luxury items. Uh, but yeah, they do make and break a trip sometimes, and uh, they can make a huge difference. So these, those are some things. They're the fun to have things. They're not the necessities, uh, but we can spend a lot of time on necessities and not think about these little uh, luxuries. And calculating those into your trip makes a huge difference. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more. So. I think that's a good spot for us to end off here tonight. Uh, much like we do at the end of all videos, if you folks out there have some essential items or some luxury items that you want to let us know about, all our stuff's down there at the bottom. Feel free to shoot us a message. Uh, we love to hear from you. If you throw some videos, or, or not videos, some pictures or something our way, we'll try and get them up. Uh, not everybody wants that, and that's cool too. We will probably reference some of the stories. A lot of times, unless somebody specifically says, oh yeah, I don't mind you saying my name, I'll just reference, you know, somebody had told us. And uh, you do hear some of those stories throughout our podcast. You may not know it. But, uh, yeah, we do love hearing about it. Let us know. We'll try and incorporate them in a little bit. And as always, get out there, have fun, be safe. Night out.